Hey, welcome to the Sanderfac, where we are going to talk about questions I get asked quite a bit. And today's question is, will you write more Wheel of Time? And or how did the whole Wheel of Time thing happen anyway, Brandon? Um, it'll be fun to document this for the YouTube channel. The whole story, how did the Wheel of Time come my way? Well, I was a brand new writer when this happened, and I was not expecting it. I didn't apply to write the Wheel of Time. Uh, what had happened is Robert Jordan's books have been very influential on me. Like a lot of authors growing up uh, in my era, they were the definitive epic fantasy of my era, of my generation. Um, I read Wheel of Time before I read Tolkien. Um, Wheel of Time was the first book series I read when I got back from Korea after doing uh, LDS uh, church work over there. Um, it is my favorite epic fantasy series. And... Through the course of my life, you can track kind of my interaction with the fantasy genre by how I was feeling about the Wheel of Time at certain times. Uh, you can totally have found me at certain points ranting with my friends about how the Wheel of Time wasn't done yet. In fact, my friend Micah, who if you read the Mistborn books, Captain Nemo is where uh, Micah's cameo in the Mistborn books. He and I together had a thing where anytime someone mentioned Robert Jordan's name, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this. Uh, he would raise his fist and we would both go, Damn him! Because the series wasn't done yet. Uh, that became a lot less fun uh, when we found out that Robert Jordan was sick with a degenerative blood disease. Um, and we stopped doing that around that time. Um, but uh, for those who don't know, he passed away in 2007. And uh, I was deeply shaken by this. Um, because... Number one, I'd been reading the blog posts he put on Dragon Mountain. He was always so upbeat. And also, you know, when reading the last books of the Wheel of Time was like this touchstone throughout my life when I'm like, I wonder where I'll be when I get to finally read that last book. And then in a moment, it was gone. Um, and I remember reading Wheel of Time books to try to learn how to construct stories and sentences and um, as an author, it's one of the textbooks I used. Uh, and I think there are few books as good as The Wheel of Time for digging in how to, into how to do some really great luscious prose and descriptions um, and really great use of viewpoint. I mean, Robert Jordan is the master of viewpoint in the epic fantasy genre. And it just it shook me a lot. Um, I took a few days um, and I eventually sat down and wrote a little eulogy for him on my website which uh, is actually kind of fun because um, my nickname was uh, Evil Undead Overlord among my friends because that's what they called me. Um, it's an old thing um, where I was editor of a magazine and then I gave up the editorship to someone else, but I kept coming back. And I had been the Evil Overlord, and then I kept coming after I gave up the editorship, so they called me the Evil Undead Overlord. So I had this little thing on my blog called Eulogies that was spelled wrong with, uh, you know, and then this was the actual only eulogy I ever wrote as part of that. Most of them were just rants about random things. Um, and this one I wrote, this thing, um, it was only like three paragraphs um, about Robert Jordan and what he meant to me. And in the meantime, unbeknownst to me, uh, Harriet, his wife, who, um, if you don't know Harriet, uh, Harriet McDougall is one of the great editors of the science fiction and fantasy world. Just... Um, she she discovered Robert Jordan and then married him, which I often joke is a great way to make sure your editorial advice gets taken. Um, she was the editor on a little book called Ender's Game, if you've ever heard of that. Um, I know she worked with Fred Saberhagen and just lots of great names um, in the early days of uh, Tor Books uh, becoming a force in uh, fantasy publishing. And it is the largest publisher of science fiction and fantasy in the U.S. Um, and back then it was a little underdog upstart that had you know this ender's game book and then eventually the wheel of time and stuff and it grew to become uh the you know the luxury name in epic fantasy um and harriet had a lot to do with that she was the editorial director uh at tor um and so i knew of harriet just by reputation um she was at uh robert jordan's funeral and a friend of hers elise matheson um was going through things on the internet to find nice things people had said about Robert Jordan to try to, you know, give her a pick-me-up. Um, and Elise was, uh, you know, looking through these and she landed on my page uh, for whatever reason. And she read it and she's like, huh, 
Harriet needs to read this. And so Elise printed it off and took it to Harriet. And she had the stack and she put mine on top. And she said, you really need to read this one. Uh, so Harriet read it. And in it, I mentioned that Robert Jordan inspired me as a writer. Um, and so she's like, huh, he's a writer. So she called Tom Doherty, who's the um, founder of Tor Books, um, and said, hey, Tom, this is, this is a Tor author. Uh, he was really inspired by Robert Jordan. Why don't you send me one of his books? Uh, Tom Doherty uh, t later tells the story. He's like, I send her Mistborn because, you know, people's first books are always okay, but it's the sophomore book where you can really tell. Um, and so he sent her Mistborn. Um, and then Harriet called me. Um, now, I do not keep a normal schedule. I don't get up when normal people get up. Um, I'm a writer. Uh, I didn't become a writer so that I could work nine to five. So I usually do two writing sessions. I usually get up at like noon or one, uh, and I write from about one until five, and then I hang out with my family. And then I go back to work and write from about 10 until two. Um, and so then I usually, excuse me, then I usually play video games for about two hours or do something else like that. Uh, go to bed around four, get up next day around noon. Uh, so I got up around noon and I had a voicemail and I still remember even the intonation. I picked it up and I was listening to my voicemails and then there was one that said, hello, Brandon Sanderson. This is Harriet McDougall Rigney. I am Robert Jordan's widow. Uh, I would like you to call me. There's something I want to talk to you about. And I was floored, right? Um, I had no idea what to expect. I'm like, what is going on? So I called her back and uh, she didn't answer. Um, so kind of very nervously and kind of freaking out a bit, I called my editor at Tor to see if he knew. This is Moshe, uh, Moshe Fader. And he didn't answer either, which is not surprising. Moshe actually, if, if there's one person with more erratic a schedule than me, it's Moshe. Uh, so he never answers his phone, so it's okay. Um, but then I called Joshua, my agent, Joshua Bilmes, uh, to see if he'd heard anything about this, and he didn't answer, which is really strange, because Joshua ever always answers. And so, no, I couldn't get a hold of anyone. I, I walked upstairs to the room, uh, to the bedroom, where my wife was, was doing something, and I said, Robert Jordan's widow just called me. And she's like, what? What did she want? And I'm like, I don't know! Um, uh, and so I commiserated with Emily for a minute. She, by the way, uh, she often says that I was more nervous that day than I was on our wedding day. Uh, she says that a little bit jealously. Uh, but we had, I had lots of time to get ready for the wedding. Uh, I was prepared. This thing dropped on me out of nowhere. Uh, eventually, I got a hold of uh, Patrick Nielsen Hayden at Tor, and I said, Patrick, what's going on? And he's like, oh, yeah, that. It's, it's what you probably think it is. I'll have her call you. And I'm like, Patrick, I don't know what I think it is. Um... I mean, I had some sort of inkling, but I've been telling myself, well, she read the nice thing that I'd written, and maybe she was calling to say, you know, thank you for writing that, maybe? I don't know. Um, but uh, I had just assumed. I'd assumed that someone was already in line to finish the Wheel of Time. I had never really even considered sending in a request because it felt like, you know, like circling like vultures to be like, ooh, you know, Robert Jordan is dead. I want to, you know, I, I, I didn't even go down that path. Uh, but Harriet called me. Uh, she'd been out getting massage, and she uh, said, well, I was just wondering if you'd be interested in finishing my late husband's work. Um, and I could not speak. I said, uh, I just couldn't get words out. Um, this, is, this is honestly true. I wrote her an email the next day that said, Dear Harriet, I promise that I'm not an idiot. Um, that's how I started it. And, um, but... Like, I didn't know what to think, right? Like, this this was a book series that had meant so much to me through my life. It was also a fantastic business opportunity, right? I certainly couldn't look past that. But at the same time, did I want to be known as the person who messed up the Wheel of Time if I did this poorly? Uh, and so I told Harriet I needed to think about it. Um, that I my initial response was this, I would be interested, but I needed to think about it. And I spent that night tossing and turning a bunch. And I kept asking myself, like, what if you screw it up, right? Like, you shouldn't write this. Robert Jordan should write this. No one should write these books uh, except for Robert Jordan. They just, maybe they just shouldn't be done. But then the fan of me is like, no, someone is going to write them. It's going to happen. And the fans deserve to have the ending. Um, it obviously isn't done very much because if it were done, or at least mostly done, they could have gotten a ghostwriter to kind of fill in the holes and released it 
Uh, we thought it was one book at that point. Um, but so I knew there wasn't a lot, uh, there wouldn't be a, a ton to go on. At least the book I figured it would have to be at least only half done, if that much. Um, and so I thought, and I'm like, ah. But then I realized, you know, if Robert Jordan couldn't write it, if he couldn't do it, then the next best person to do it was probably me. Because if you you take you make your Venn diagram, you can make a Venn diagram of pretty decent authors, right? There are better authors out there than me, most certainly. But if you you make that circle of pretty decent authors, people know what they're doing. I'm in that circle. If you pick the circle of pretty big Wheel of Time fans, there are much bigger Wheel of Time fans than me, right? Um, like me remembering the names of all the side characters, that's just not something you could, you could get me to do. Even now I, I'm, you know, these years later, I'm starting to forget. Um, but if you put that Venn diagram together of pretty decent authors and pretty big wheel of time fans, my name's right in that, that center part. Uh, I don't know how many other people are there, but I know I'm there. And I thought if I say no and they hire someone who is only one of those two, right? Someone who's a big fan but not a great writer or that someone who's um, a good writer but doesn't know the Wheel of Time, uh, the chances of being really good go down dramatically in my opinion. And I realized if Robert Jordan can't write it, the only way to make sure that it's written the right way is to do it myself. Uh, and so I wrote Harriet that, that email and I said, I promise I'm, a, I'm not an idiot. I decided I really want to do this. Um, because of this logic, if someone's going to write it and it can't be Robert Jordan, I want to do it myself to make sure that it's good. Um, and Harriet then said, great. Um, she said, I've, I've got a list of people I'm considering. Later found out that was just me um, at that point and uh, George Martin. Uh, she, had, she had considered George Martin and discarded him very quickly because she realized his fans would revolt um, if he were given another project because he wasn't finished with A Song of Ice and Fire, which at this recording he still isn't. So it was probably a good move. Uh, uh, but uh, Jim, Robert Jordan's really miss Jim. Jim uh, and George Martin were good friends. Uh, Robert Jordan had cover blurbed the first uh, Game of Thrones novel and things. And so it was a natural um, thought, but uh, she's, she wanted to read Mistborn and see if I was the right match. Um, so she read Mistborn at that point. She really liked Mistborn. Uh, it was the thing that, um, that really kind of convinced her. Um, so she called me back. I actually went on tour for Mistborn 2 in the middle of this, not knowing um, like what was going to happen. It might have been Mistborn 3. I think it was actually Mistborn 3. Um, I went on tour for whichever one came out in 2007. Um, and uh, couldn't tell anyone I was being considered for this. Uh, was really nervous and then got the phone call from her after the tour. She said, I've read your work. I've dug into what you do. I would like you to finish The Wheel of Time. Um, and at that point, I flew to Charleston. Uh, by the way, shortest uh, contract negotiations ever, ever. I called my agent and said, she wants me. Let's do it. And he's like, great. We'll see what the contract looks like. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. That's not how this is going to go. We're saying yes. Just say yes. What if they send us? Say yes. Doesn't matter. Um, so we said yes. Uh, she was actually very generous with the contract, so um, Joshua didn't have anything to complain about anyway. Uh, but I went to Charleston, picked up the material. Um, it was actually kind of fun. Harriet um, picked me up from the airport herself. Uh, if you want to imagine Harriet, like mix your um, your grandmother, like just the, a wonderful grandmother, like the ar archetypal wonderful grandmother mixed with um, a southern gentlewoman together with uh with someone who just really knows storytelling and you've got harriet she's just somehow both refined and um able to put people at ease at the same time which is one of the few people i've ever met who can do that um and she we got home she's like to her house she's like i fixed i have some um some soup in the fridge i can warm up for you would you like something to eat and i said i actually would like the ending please and she laughed and gave it to me and i sat in his chair I didn't know it was his chair at the time. Um, and I read what he had written. And what he had written uh, is what ended up as the epilogue of the last book, The Wheel of Time, mixed with some pieces and chunks from the um, what became the prologue to the three books. I took a piece um, and put it in each of the three prologues, mixed with some things happening in Egwene's viewpoints, um, was the majority of what he'd written. A little tiny bit uh, for Tower of Genji. Um, and um, I sat and I read all that, the prose that he had written, 
Um, and that's how it started. Um, I then took the next five years of my life and worked on that series. This brings us around to the question that Adam wanted me to answer at the beginning, which is, uh, will there be more Wheel of Time books? I can't say. Um, the Wheel of Time is not mine. And I very carefully wanted to make sure that I did not take ownership of the entire Wheel of Time. I take ownership for the three books I wrote. Um, those are as much mine, I believe, as Robert Jordan's, and I treat them like any of my children, uh, any of my books. I'm very proud of those books. And during the time writing those books, I was the face of the Wheel of Time, and I took ownership of it. Um, Harriet gave me a lot of freedom. She said, you need to be an author, not just a ghostwriter. You need to take chances. And you need to write this the best way you can as an author. And if you go too far, I'll pull you back and point you in the right direction because she's a really great editor. Uh, and she understood that. So I had a lot of creative freedom. Um, all I had to do was do it in a way that Har Harriet was convinced. Um, and there were certain things she pulled me back on, rightly so. You can find most of those uh, as deleted scenes in various things. Um, but... Um, during that time, I did take ownership, and I became the face of the Wheel of Time. I became the stepdad to the millions of fans. But when it was time to be done, I considered the Wheel of Time a little bit like the One Ring, in that I was, I was not Frodo, I was, uh, I was Sam. I carried the ring for a time when Frodo couldn't, but then I needed to give the ring back. Um, because it was not my duty, my burden, or my task to continue holding it. Um, and I handed that back, and I used that metaphor with Harriet saying, I am handing this back, um, and it is up to her what she wants to do. I know that Robert Jordan was very uncomfortable with the idea of other people writing in his universe. Uh, for years, he said if the books, um, if he didn't finish the books, he'd order you know, his hard drives bulldozed, and that would be the end. And he only changed his mind right near the end when he was very sick, and he thought, no, um, and he, he wanted Harriet to pick someone to finish it. Uh, he didn't want to do it himself. Harriet says he, she thought it was a little too much like confronting his own mortality. Um, but I feel a strong need to respect Robert Jordan in that area, um, it doesn't mean that I would be um, upset if other people did it or I would think uh, or j be judgmental of them, but I handed that ring back and I told Harriet, I'm not going to write any more Wheel of Time. She didn't want me to. She didn't ask. She said, what do you think? Tom Doherty is saying we should do more. And I said, well, I think that it is time for me to give this back and I will not write any more Wheel of Time um, because I'm not Frodo, I'm Sam in the Wheel of Time universe. In the Cosmere, I get to be Frodo or whatever. I get to be Gandalf or whatever I want to be. Uh, but for that, I was I was there to help when, in, when the help was needed. And then part of the importance of my job, I felt, was being willing to walk away when I thought the job was done. And the job was done. Um, and so, no, I will not be writing any more Wheel of Time. Um, I did read the scripts for the TV sh show when they asked me and offer my feedback uh, to the showrunner. I'm perfectly happy to do things like that. And if another author is ever hired to write Wheel of Time books, I would love to read them early and offer my uh, insight such that it is uh, to them. Um, I could see myself doing something like that, um, but I don't think um, it is appropriate for me to do further Wheel of Time books. And that is the re my reasoning why. Um, I, I don't think Robert Jordan would want me to. Um, and so I have stepped down from that mantle and have given it back willingly. Um, and we will see what happens in the future with the Wheel of Time, uh, with the television show and things like that. I, like everyone else, am eager to see how it goes.